birth of a baby is a miracle that moms and dads eagerly await. The first smile of a child, the first word, the first step. Nothing compares to the pleasure of looking after the progress of your child. Me and my husband were really expecting for Kola. My pregnancy was wonderful, I rested, my lifestyle was healthy, I ate healthy food. But sometimes the miracle turns into a tragedy. It was a bombshell. When maternity nurse had observed Kolya, she said, you have some problem with your boy, something with his spine. It was something I could not accept. Unfortunately, there are lots of congenital disorders affecting the correct evolution of a child. Spinal dysrophism is one of such disorders. Spinal dysrophism is a congenital anomaly of central nervous system specifically an anomaly of a spinal cord and a vertebral column. Some vertebrae overlying the spinal cord are not fully formed and remain unfused and open. Due to that, the evolution of the spinal cord suffers. This is Nikolai. From this year on, he studies at the school with the in-depth study of the foreign languages. Today he can walk, run, swim and do almost everything that his fellows can do. But Kolya and his parents had had to fight through every hardship to win the boy's ability to play football or to ride a bicycle. They told us to visit newer surgeons and to do everything they say. Surgeons advised us to let the child be until six months. But about the age of five months, Kolya stopped moving his legs and they were cold. It was the explicit sign that something was wrong. There are two forms of spinal dystrophism, occult and explicit. The last one is known as myelocele. It can be easily diagnosed because of its visual expression. The myelocele might contain a portion of the spinal cord on which depends a neurological pathology of a child. The most common location of the malformations are the cervical, pectoral and lumbar areas. The higher the myelocele, the more dysfunctions has a patient. Occult spinal dystrophism may also be the cause of severe neurological movement disorder. Such form of spinal dystrophism is hard to diagnose at the moment of birth. Such forms like myelodysplasia, tethered cord, lipoma of different kinds. As an example, tethered spinal cord syndrome. A part of the spinal cord is tethered in the spinal canal. It does not grow with the child. The roots of spinal cord stretch and neurological disorders appear. Both kinds of spinal dysrophism have the same consequences, leg weakness and orthopedic anomalies. It means that a child will not walk when grows up. If such children even start to walk, they do it defective and later than their fellows. Or they never walk and stay chair-bound for a lifetime. Besides, they have bladder and bowel control problems. The first step to healthy life is an operation. But in spite of the technological advancement and modern technique, the congenital anomaly of the spinal cord cannot be totally cured. Kolya had the surgery at the age of seven months. The operation was long, I was afraid. But it is not the surgery that is hard. The rehabilitation is much harder. The surgeon came to me and started telling about the consequences of the operation. Your child will not crawl, probably, he said, nor sit or walk. He'll be a lying patient. He'll have bladder and bowels control problems. I asked him how long would it take to recuperate, and he answered, a lifetime. Parents have the only option to wait and to hope that the state of their child's health will get better. But there is a question. If the surgeon succeeded, why the problems remain? It appears that even the successful operation does not guarantee that the child will walk. The problem is about rehabilitation. What to do with these children after the operation? How will they recuperate? What kind of movements will they be able to do? It all depends on the damage to the spinal cord and also on the efficacy of the rehabilitation. 
After the surgical intervention, children with spinal dystrophism need lasting medical rehabilitation because of the damaged spinal cord. As a result, these children start to crawl, sit or walk later than their fellows. Or do not start at all. Specialists of the Rehabilitation Center Agonyok are ready to help. At this center, children with the different neural system disorders, including the patients with the occult spinal dysrophism, are taught to move. Success depends not only on the integrity of the spinal cord tissue, but also on the timeliness of therapeutic intervention. We met Kolya Shulga several years ago, at 2009. He could only walk with the support on both hands, he could not walk singly, he could not stand straight, he had bowel and bladder dysfunctions, leg weakness. The spinal dysrophism often causes another serious problem – hip dislocation. The reasons of it are leg weakness and disturbed trophism. It is extremely difficult to teach children with dislocated hips to stand by themselves. They need correct orthopedic care. However, there hadn't been a way to help such children for a long time. Massage, therapeutic exercises or physiotherapy had been fruitless. Only another operation could have put it right. They told us that another operation had to be taken. However, not on the spine, but on the hip joint, because it was not formed up. There was a period when several different doctors advised us different things. Each one had a plan what to do to Nikolai. And no one had told me that after such operation, none of these children went through to recovery. The bones would be healthy, but he would not be able to use them. Post-operation period lasts for six months, and during this time children get total leg muscles atrophy. He was already prepared for the surgery. The operation stages were drawn on the x-rays. But for such children the operation means deprivation of movements. There was no alternative to the operation for a long time. But Nikolai is lucky. He had met specialists of Oganyok and they found the solution. It was decided not to fix Nikolai's hip in surgical way. Specialists of the scientific production center Oganyok developed orthopedic apparatus that helps children with hip dislocation to make their first step. So the urgent operation was not necessary for Nikolai. And for the boy and his mom, hard everyday work began. The main task was to learn how to walk. Just putting the apparatus on is not enough. It is necessary to perform exercises every day. Once in six months, a child is getting through a rehabilitation course. During this time, the specialists of the Alganyok tend to a child. They teach him to move. The patient's brain needs some time to get used to the new experience. Every time the child gets a homework in order to solidify the new skill. And then the next stage of the training begins. In our case, Nikolai's feet needed fixing first, because they couldn't hold his weight. When the fixing was done, the problem of a displaced hip appeared. The difficulty was that there were apparatuses that could fix only one part of the body. But for Nikolai, it was necessary to join several devices in one. The apparatus for the whole leg. We call it biomechanical rotary correction apparatus. We created this device. One part of it works for the hip abduction and for the correction of the whole leg is another part. They are joined together. The child is comfortable, nothing hampers. This apparatus is modular. That is an advantage, because children grow up quickly and to replace a component one doesn't need to replace the whole device. Facing the problems, we try to solve them by changing the construction of the device. We try to improve it for the comfort of our little patients. The Oganyok's technical innovation gave chance to many children, and to Nikolai too. He was the first to test the device. However, in the very beginning, Nikolai and his parents had faced the problem. Constant contact to the new apparatus had caused the appearance of the trophic ulcers. It took a long time to solve the problem. But difficulties could not stop parents nor doctors. After the ulcers were cured, the device was upgraded again. It was fit up with soft layers. The discomfort was made away. Mama. 
Nikolai's mother was enthusiastic in trying. Although we promised nothing, we didn't say Коля's going to stand up and run tomorrow. We couldn't even imagine that. It was the approbation. Nevertheless, we've got the wonderful result. Our goal is to teach him to move without the adult's help. We parents are not immortal, and he must count only on himself. We think that walking is simple, but in fact it is a very complicated process. The nervous system controls the muscle work. Motor nerves send information from brain to the leg muscles. And if the system breaks down, it is very difficult to find fit. Difficult, but possible. The Gravistat Gravitone is a special suit designed by the specialists of Oganyok. It helps the sick children to feel legs. But when the hip joints are not healthy, the suit cannot be used, because the hip condition might get worse. This apparatus is unique. Without it, a child with dislocated hip could not walk. The device was created after 25 years of research work. It was meant for the children with infantile cerebral paralysis. The invention has no analogs in Russia nor abroad. The development of such devices is an achievement that gets rehabilitation of spinal dystrophism patients on the new level. This apparatus is the only one that can hold his complex leg. We tried four different devices and only this is light and durable. A great thanks to the specialists of Aganyok for their work. They care about this. Many children have the same problem and they don't know what to do. This apparatus not only corrects hips location, it also corrects the position of shins and feet, enhances supportability. Children start to learn step movements in this device. Today Nikolai moves around singly and moves reasonably and far. He tends to himself, he lives normal life. But it took many years and many efforts of the whole rehabilitation team, including orthopedists, prosthetists, neurologists, therapeutic exercise specialists and so on, to set this child, to set this kid on his feet and teach him to walk. We have a limited improvement, but for me it's a great advantage of the same, because we're not stagnant, we don't roll back, we slowly move forward. Before Kole could walk only with the support, and now he walks by himself. He couldn't stand straight, he fell, and now he has balance. He lives normal life. Today Kolya doesn't need an operation. After a year of exercises in the rehabilitation center Aganyok, he started to walk singly. Although at the beginning he hadn't been able to stop and they had had to catch him. The location of his hips is fixing. X-rays show great improvements. And yet his pace slightly differs from normal. He can walk. Every course of rehabilitation is fruitful. Besides the special exercises at the Aganyok, Kolya always wears the apparatus and makes exercises at home. And little by little, his hips, shins and feet are getting better. We tune up the apparatus step by step. That is, we can't correct the pathology at once, because it will cause pains, tropathy and trophy. Of course, it is a lasting process. It takes a great deal of efforts of medical staff and naturally the emotional stress. And it takes understanding on the part of parents and zeal on the part of our little patients. Nevertheless, we're very glad when we get such a result. After every rehabilitation course, we get a homework, because without it, there is no gain. Of course, it's very difficult to put aside all the doings and say to myself, now you're going and tending to your child, you're going to give him some health. And the kid says that he's tired, he has no time, he wants to go for a walk, to watch the cartoons and so on. And you must put it all aside and make him and yourself work. Because if you don't do it, nobody will. Of course, the devices designed at the Oganyok are not a 100% alternative to the surgical service. It all depends on the patient's condition and diagnosis. But this apparatus gives an opportunity to start normal life to many children. Today, about 10 kids use the hip abduction apparatus.
and the majority has the positive dynamics. Some have none dynamics at all, and that's good too, because there is no worsening. We stop the progress of the sickness. By the way, these devices have all the required documentation for the payment by social safety net of Moscow and Moscow region. Determined character and buoyancy are very important when you struggle the sickness, as the determination in achieving the goal. And Nikolai has only one goal today. I'm eager to walk without the apparatus. I hope very, very much that we will kill this disease without the operation. Today the kid walks very reasonably. We hope that we can improve the quality of pace during the following rehabilitation courses. The work will go on while the kid grows up. And we're eager to get rid of this device in the future. And I hope that we will do it.